Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. I pray that you enjoyed my two friends who spoke earlier this week, uh, both Cheryl and Ron. They're very special friends of mine, and I'm blessed to be with them and serve Christ with them. The rest of this week, we're going to be looking at Psalm 142. It's a psalm of David, and it's a psalm when David is in trouble. I call it, How to Pray When Your Self-Esteem Is Gone. I know many of you don't suffer from that problem, now do you? Yes, you do. I know you do, because I do occasionally of myself. Because there are times when we feel as though no one loves us. It feels as though there are things that have gone wrong in our lives, and we're not sure what to do next or how to, how to move forward. And so sometimes our self-esteem just takes a big hit, and we're not sure what to do about it. Well, we're helped by David here in this psalm as we look together at it, because God is always speaking to our spiritual self-esteem. Because remember, our self-esteem is how we define ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we see God. And so if we have low self-esteem, then we're always doubtful about who God is. We're also doubtful about ourselves. Whereas that's not the life that the Father wants us to have. Remember, He's constantly speaking to, into our lives, telling us that we're His son, His daughter, that we are new creations, that our self-esteem should be buoyed up by the fact that we belong to Him. And as we belong to Him as a loving Father, He then takes care of us and speaks into our hearts, our minds, our souls. And so understand that. When trouble comes, when issues happen in our lives, remember that the Father is there with us to whisper in our ear, to encourage our self-esteem. So here's Psalm 142. Today we're just going to deal with verses 1 and 2. But here it is. David is saying, I cry aloud to the Lord with my voice. I make supplication with my voice to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my troubles before him. When my spirit is overwhelmed within me, you did know my path in the way where I walk. <clears throat> they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and look to the left and see. For there is no one who regards me. There is no escape for me. No one cares for my soul. I cried aloud to thee, O Lord, and I said, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Now give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors. They are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of this prison, so that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me. Understand that. Did you hear David's pain there, his hurt? God, where are you? So let's look at verses 1 and 2 very quickly. He says, I cry out with my voice to the Lord. I make supplication with my voice to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my trouble to him. You notice each one of those lines ends with the Lord or before him. And the idea is that when we're in trouble spiritually, when we're in trouble with our self-esteem, we go to the Father. Why? Because he is the Perfector, as Jesus tells us, the author and finisher of our faith. That is who Jesus is. So we go there, and that is what David is doing. Now, what's David's situation? We believe that this mascal or this psalm comes out of 1 Samuel 22 to 24. And the idea there is that David has left Gath and escaped, and he's living in a cave. And so what happens in this cave a few, few uh, chapters later is Saul comes into the cave and David can kill him. But David does not because David remembers the word says, touch not my anointed. But understand David's situation. He's done nothing wrong. He knows that the, that the father has proclaimed him to be king, yet <clears throat> he is hiding out in the wilderness, living in a cave. Why? Because his self-esteem is so low. <clears throat> Saul wants to kill him. So what instead, instead of reveling in the fact that, oh man, he wants to kill me, what am I going to do? We all get there. Oh man, no. What does he do? He uses several different forms of prayer here. 
The first one is, I cry aloud to the Lord with my voice. In other words, I wail before you. I wail before you. I had a different, who, his wife passed. He says, there were sounds coming out of me that I never knew I could make. Why? Because he is wailing in front of the Lord. Lord, I am in deep distress here. Father, speak to me. I will. I make my voice known to you. The second one, he says, Lord, I make my supplication to you. And the idea there, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I am listing my complaint, my issue, the way that I am. Lord, I am supplicating before you. Lord, I am surrendering myself because, Lord, I want you to understand this complaint that I have. Because, Lord, it is weighing my soul down. Lord, I supplicate before you. Because, Lord, I am in need of your favor. I am in need of you speaking here to me. That, Father, I may understand your spirit. Lord, I may understand your presence. You know those times when you feel like the Father is just so far away? Yet you supplicate, Lord, hear my complaint. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need to seek you. Lord, I need to feel you and know you right now. Lord, there's pain in my life. Lord, I feel like I am so low I can't get up. Lord, I supplicate. I bring my supplications to you. The next one, <clears throat> I pour out my complaint. Literally, Lord, I empty myself. Father, these tears, this issue in my life, Lord, I pour it out before you, Lord. It comes out of me because, Father, it is weighing me down again. Lord, my complaint, I pour it out. Think of it this way. Often our lives sometimes are, are pictured as pitch, pictures, pictures. You know, you put water, juice in. And so what he's saying is, Lord, I pour out myself before you. Lord, I pour out my complaint. Lord, I empty myself of this because I need you to speak here into me that, Father, I may know you. Lord, guide me here. And then he says, I declare my troubles. <laughs> now, you would think by now you get tired of this complaint, but no, understand. Lord, I cry aloud. Lord, I make supplication to you. I need you. Lord, I pour out my complaint. Lord, I list my trouble. Lord, the hostilities in my life. Lord, I give them to you. Why? Because what he's doing in these different forms of prayer, he's saying, Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord, I cry aloud. I make supplication. Lord, I pour out myself. Lord, I declare. And what does declare mean? It Lord, I'm standing on this because, Lord, I am giving this to you. Because, Father, I need you to speak here. We all have those lamentations in our lives. But remember, at the end of each one of these sentences, it's the Lord to you, the Lord before him. Why? Understand this word, Lord here, Yahweh. Yahweh, Jehovah as we would say it, is God's relationship name. Lord, I give these troubles, these issues to you, that Father, you may speak into my heart my mind, my soul, because, Father, right now, my self-esteem, Lord, my spiritual self is at such a low point. I need you to speak into me now that, Father, I may hear and know you. So, no matter how you pray, think of it as crying aloud, making supplication, listing your complaint, Pouring out yourself, declaring your trouble. Why? Because the Father is going to deliver you. Lord Jesus, we bless you for today, and Lord, we thank you. But Father, you give us the reality of Scripture, that we may see and know how it is you will lead us and guide us, Lord, when our emotions, our feelings, our situations overwhelm us. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.